The Omegon Q71 promises a perfect flat field and color correction for full-frame cameras. A medium-sized refractor made for astrophotography. Ingenious product or cheap third-party branding? Let's find out. A refractor telescope with an aperture of 71 mm, a focal length of 450, a ratio of f6.3, three air-spaced glass lenses at the front and an integrated fourth lens as corrector in the back. Two-inch hybrid gear rack focuser with tension ring, rotation ring and extendable dew shield. Vixen scale dovetail bar and finder scope bracket, total weight of 2.5 kilograms. The glass use is synthetic fluoride, FPL 53, the best possible glass for night sky imaging. The brand Omegon belongs to astroshop.eu, a retailer located near Munich, Germany. Their take on this refractor comes with a red matte finish, black ring clamps and a 2 inch to 1.25 inch reducer. Hello everybody, my name is Tim. My hobby is deep sky astrophotography here in my backyard in Frankfurt, Germany. I've bought this telescope two months ago now and I've had three clear nights since November, shooting Andromeda Galaxy and the Pleiades. I'm pretty sure that I've used this telescope enough to give a good quality review on it. My setup is made for deep sky long exposure imaging, finding and tracking the target at a high precision. I'm using a dedicated astronomy camera with a sensor size that is even smaller than APS-C, not full frame. My previous telescope is a 714mm refractor, so this is basically a downgrade comparing the focal length. I bought this scope because of the promised quality, the rather wide field of view and the low price of only 700 euros. I've made myself a list of things I like, things I don't like and some neutral facts which you still might consider before making a decision. My first thoughts while unboxing the scope were it looks and feels great. Less plastic, metal where it should be. Nice finish and every part is smooth to the touch. The glass is, as I said, FPL 53 by German manufacturer Ohara. Its properties, primarily the dispersion value of 0.004, are perfect for astrophotography, reducing color fringing around stars to an absolute minimum. But is that actually true? My experience is, yes it is. I have never seen any color fringing around stars, even the brightest ones, like Capella for example. With all the glass lenses inside here, the stars in the field of view are pinpoint sharp and there are so many of them. This abundance of stars is primarily because of the short focal length, but because of the fine-tuned focuser as well. Usually small stars out of focus are just gone, but not with this telescope. The other topic of interest is the focuser. Hybrid gear rack is a fancy term for a combination of the classic Crayford style focuser and a gear rack system. It's supposed to combine the good features of both systems. High accuracy, a great payload capacity without any camera slippage. The scope comes with two screws, one to adjust the tension of the focuser and the other one to lock it down. With the tension on low level, you will be able to move both knobs very easily without any feel for the gear system. Once you tighten up the focus a tiny bit, you will start to feel a tiny bit of those gears, but it's really solid. It's really great to the touch. And with extreme tension on the screw here, don't do that by the way. Turning these knobs is almost impossible. And that is why this focuser will never slip during the night, which is great. But I got the chance to read in the comments already. This focuser suffers from the same most annoying issue like all the other Omega telescopes I've used. I have three of them already. When you find focus in the night and you try to lock it down, look at this. Locking the focus takes off the tension and pushes the tube into a fixed position. The problem is, the moment the tension is released, the gears backlash into the last gap moving the tube a tiny bit. This tiny bit can be a quite annoying bit if you have heavy payload and while pointing up. I am used to this issue and found a way to work around it. While focusing I adjust, lock, check and if the focus is not correct I unlock, adjust, lock, check. Ideally you could adjust and lock only once 
but this is not an option here. It takes some getting used to, but once you figured it out, focusing is not a problem anymore. The lens cap does not screw on the telescope, it just sits there and it's coated on the inside with a really smooth but firm material and it will never fall off there, even if you hold it upside down. That's of course a really nice feature. We all know at least one person who always drops the lens caps. That always happens. Another great feature is the rotation ring. It rotates smooth, does not slip and will keep the current position of the focuser. Very helpful for astrophotography. It is most annoying if you've focused, slow to the object and realize that Andromeda Galaxy sits vertical. Before this, I had to slew to the object first, loosen the knobs on the compression ring and rotate until I found the right spot. And if you've accidentally focused before that, you can do all of that again. A simple but very helpful feature. The last thing on the positive list, the screws and knobs all over this telescope are big, greased up and really firm to the touch. You know that your equipment is safely secured, which is nice. Let's get to the few negative parts I don't like about this telescope. The Vixen style dovetail bar on the bottom is really short, which makes balancing a really challenging issue. If you don't use auto guiding, a good balancing will save your night. I actually had to use an extra counterweight once before, hanging on there for dear life. It is said that this telescope is made for full frame cameras. But let's take a look at some of the edges of the images I've taken. I definitely see field distortion here. And the sensor of the camera is even smaller than an APS-C sensor. I don't really know why this is happening. But I suspect that it has something to do with the loosened collimation screws. Already on the go as I unboxed it. If you know how to collimate a quad properly, props to you. Anyone really picky with distortion has to do that at least once. And now to the few neutral facts, the good to know facts as I like to call them. This telescope is kinda heavy, it weighs 2.5 kilograms. It's much more than you might think holding this in your hand. It is much smaller than I expected it to be in, on the, in the images on retail. The back focus is pretty generous, you can easily fit a filter wheel and an off-axis guider in there, no problem. If you try to grab it with gloves, be really careful, it can slip away very easily. My final impression of this telescope. If you are a professional astrophotographer and you want top-notch imaging capabilities, this telescope will not suit your needs 100%. I am not one of these people, I can live with the slight distortion in the edges and that is why I really am happy with this telescope. If you are a beginner, just starting out in astrophotography, this scope can be quite a handful. But if you have some experience with telescopes, you will really not be disappointed, it's great. Advanced astrophotographers will find great imaging capabilities a field of view that allows for creative compositions, a small telescope that can easily be brought to dark skies. You'll need a sturdy sky tracker, capable of 5 kilograms minimum, just to be safe. No carrying case is definitely a letdown. A delicate scope like this wants to be handled with care. I have never seen chromatic aberration in any of my images thanks to the low dispersion glass. I can ignore the slight curvature at the edges. But if you're using a full frame camera, this effect will definitely be worse. The corners are not perfect, stars will be elongated. My final rate is a solid 8 out of 10. A great telescope for a price that no one can be mad about. I really am excited to use this body in the future. I know that the images will look great. If you still have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. A big thanks to all my supporters on Patreon, you guys are the best. It's two days before Christmas now and the last weeks were definitely very stressful for me, but, but I really hope that I can get a few clear nights very soon. I really need that right now. As for this video, my name is Tim, I'm an astro addict, I wish you clear skies and may the night be with us.